Chapter 18 Photographs The Power of Pictures Most people likely have at least two cameras, a traditional digital camera of some sort and a cell phone that can take photos. Adding photography into your content mix is not something that needs to be expensive, scary, or daunting. As world-renowned Seattle photographer Chase Jarvis says, The best camera is the one that you have with you. Keep that in mind as we talk about how photography can add visual interest to your content mix. What should I take pictures of? Photography allows you to put a face on your business. Is your company run by machines, or does a robot greet people at the front door? Unless you've got something really cool going on, the answer is no. So allow photos to show the human side of your business not necessarily headshots of all your staff on your website, but that wouldn't be a bad start. Capture moments in and around the company. Take photos at the next company meeting, summer picnic, or holiday party, even if you don't have a solid use for them yet. Encourage your staff to bring cameras and take photos, or consider purchasing an official camera for the office to use at business events. Those photos can be shared online or used in print brochures or other marketing materials for your company. Zappos has gone so far as to publish a yearly culture book that, in addition to words of inspiration and other goodies, includes a healthy dose of photos from all around the company. In addition to taking pictures of the people who work for you, take photos of your products as well. We've all seen the standard glamour shots of the product against a white background from all sorts of angles. But start thinking beyond that. Think about showing the product in real-world situations so-called lifestyle shots that will give people a better idea of the size and uses of the product. Threadless.com Encourages fans to upload photos of themselves or their friends wearing the t-shirts that the company sells. A quick glance at the Threadless site will reveal a variety of faces from around the world wearing each of the shirts. Those passionate, product-loving shots add a sense of community around the product that a typical product shot could never hope to achieve. Using such images instead of staid, boring stock photos would humanize your company. Sharing and tagging Tagging may not sound sexy, but it is how photography, when added to your content mix, can become really powerful. Major photo sharing sites, such as Flickr and Facebook, have some sort of person tagging feature built in. If your photo contains images of Julian and Amber or DJ and Lee, you are able to click on their faces and add their names to the photo. In most systems, the people in the photo are notified when this happens, and in some cases the photograph will actually show up to others who are connected to the people tagged in the photos. Did you notice what happened there? That photo you took at the new product launch is suddenly showing up not just to all the employees in the picture you tagged, but also to their friends. Those friends might look at the photo and think, Wow, what a cool company or I didn't know they had that new design. I should check out their website. These are the types of reactions that a simple casual photograph can create, but you need to make sure that you share and tag photos appropriately. Besides tagging the people in the pictures, add as many descriptive tags to the photo as makes sense. Imagine that you are going to put copies of the photo in a massive file cabinet with unlimited folders, and you want to make sure the photo is in all the folders that you might look in later when searching for it. Those files are the equivalent of the words that you should tag your photo with. Another way to think about tagging is to consider what search words you would like your photograph to come up as a search result for. All of those words and phrases need to be added as tags. Each photo sharing system's tagging is done a little bit differently. Flickr gives you separate fields for entering tags and people's names. Facebook asks you to click on people's faces and then to type in their names, but it doesn't allow tagging at the time this chapter was written, so you need to put in a really descriptive caption instead. Getting the good shot. The simple truth is that almost anyone can buy a new digital camera and take some pretty amazing photos. Taking a great photo has more to do with the person behind the camera than it does with what camera they are taking the photo with. I living at least one high-quality digital camera on hand will encourage you to take more photos. For under $1,000. Your options are massive, and there are plenty of great options under $500 as well. And a quick trip to the nearest electronics store will allow you to play with different models and get hands-on with different models. Many models today take video as well as stills, so if video is going to be in your content mix and why wouldn't it? Then look at those specifications as well when you are shopping. It is never a bad thing when a single piece of equipment can be used for multiple tasks. Ask any photographer and she will tell you that the secret of getting the great shot is to take lots of photos. With storage being a cheap commodity these days, just keep taking photos. At every event, take lots of shots and then afterward keep the best ones and put them in a folder for the event. Save these in the appropriate place and upload the ones you want to share with the world. Don't have the budget for a new camera. Then use what you've got and make the most of it. Use your cell phone to take casual photos and upload them straight to the internet using the tool that is integrated with your website. Don't have anything integrated yet? Then sign up for a free Flickr account and upload them straight to there. There is nothing worse than being at an event and thinking, Man, I wish I had a camera right now to capture this. When in doubt, shoot the pictures. You'll have plenty of time afterward to decide if you want to use them in some way or not. But if you never got the photo in the first place, you don't have the option. Bring in the big guns. Just because you have a digital camera or know someone who has a digital SLR single lens reflex camera and seems to take great photos is no reason to not consider hiring a professional some people in your very neighborhood likely make a living as photographers. Although the casual around the office shots are great for anyone to shoot, you should consider bringing in a professional for some situations, trade shows and all events. If you really want to document a party or other large event, then you want someone who is not going to be distracted by the goings on and is focused solely on documenting the event. 
Even though at a wedding everyone is going to be taking photos, you still want someone with a professional eye to really capture the occasion. Headshots? These certainly don't have to be the type of static, posed shots that we see in banks around the world. Still, if you want to document your staff with headshots, then bring in a specialist. Product glamour shots? It doesn't matter whether you sell messenger bags or run a boutique hotel, you must have professional photographs of what you are selling. If you want people to buy your product, literally, you want to show your stuff in the best possible light. Professional photographers range in price and skill, so shop around. Ask friends for recommendations. Keep in mind that many specialize in a certain type of photography, so the great event photographer you hired last year may not be the best person to bring in to shoot headshots of the new executive board.